What's going on everybody? Mr. Thrasher here. Are you ready for a Nightmare on Elm Street? Three locations. Dream Warriors. That's right. We're going to hit as many spots as we can around the greater Los Angeles area and check this out. Look what appropriate shirt have acquired. Perfect for this film location tour. That's right. Are we ready? A Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Let's go. over here to 1428 North Genesee aka Elm Street and Nancy's house Freddy's house Nancy's house once again of course we have Nancy in a nightmare on Elm Street 3 but we don't see the house quite as much except for in Kristen's dream sequences and then she ends up building the house out of popsicle sticks which is extremely cool got a private property gate up now Pretty cool. It's gonna be a serious tragedy if they change the look of this house. Shot, shot here in the evening hours. Can't do any type of Nightmare on Elm Street tour without showing the house at 1428 Elm. AKA North Genesee. Notorious Elm Street trees featured very heavily in the original. Time Johnny Depp pulls up, you can see these right behind him. Those are cool. Oh, some epic Elm Street trees. These are quick screen grab here of Kristen walking up to the Elm Street house and you can see one of those trees behind her right here. So they probably shot that right here. Oh yeah, I just gotta admire those trees. Let's see, I've touched the trees. The Elm Street trees across from Nancy's house or Freddy's house. I like to call it Freddy's house. Another look at those trees you see in A Nightmare on Elm Street 1. You do see them. I'm pretty sure you do see them in a couple of the other films, but whether this was actually used in A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 or not. As I say, it could have been just a set dressed, you know, facade looking like this house, but still, it was included. That little girl, as soon as she enters, Freddy's home. Elm Street. Okay. So our next spot on this Elm Street 3 tour comes to a very familiar building that you should know. This is on the UCLA campus, and that's Royce Hall. Ooh, that's ominous. The gray sky. So Kristen, played by Patricia Arquette, David Arquette's sister, is sent to Weston Hills. This is the back of UCLA, used as that establishing shot. So basically every time you get a shot of Weston Hills, it's this shot behind UCLA. 
put up a fake gate here, make it all look believable. That's the shot right there. So we end up here at the back of UCLA when Kirsten's sent to Weston Hills, which is a hospital that occurs again and again in the Elm Street franchise. But this is the shot you get. Royce Hall over here, this is the back. These trees weren't so grown up. But this is the first shot you get. Makeshift gate set up here. Weston Hills right there. The big break in TV. All that stuff was either shot on a soundstage. A lot of it was shot in here. Can't get inside, but we are going to be able to do the uh, exterior tour today. This is the first shot you get of Weston Hills. Here's a shot of Weston Hills here in the film, Weston Hills Psychiatric Hospital. There's the Royce Hall Tower there. Almost that balcony area there. The doors, everything is the same except they put up these gates for the film. And of course the sign. It's all just right here, back of UCLA. That right there in the shot, of course, Royce Hall and the tower. This whole ledge above these windows up here. Patricia Arquette did a good job playing Kristen. Heather Langenkamp, Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. This is going to be fun. We're at Weston Hills Mental Hospital. Over here is the scene where Neil was talking to Nancy about the kids and their dreams. And they walk along this exact railing that hasn't changed at all since the filming of Elm Street 3 in 1987. Look at all that. Same wear and everything. Same cracks were in the film. They walk along this railing heading this direction. This is on the left side of the towers at UCLA. Heather Lang Camp and Neil walk this way over to here. It seems to share a group delusion, a, a boogeyman, for lack of a better word. They're so traumatized to get the razors, but he cut off his own eyelids to stay awake. Oh, God. Shook the kids up pretty badly. Pretty killer to see this exact railing looking the exact same as it did in the film. Even cooler to see this hallway right here. I'm going to walk through it quick. This is where you first saw Amanda Kruger. Nancy branched off. Neil star stares down this direction. See a woman he did not know. And you'd find out later that that is Freddie's mother, Amanda Kruger, standing right over there. Pretty awesome. He was standing right here underneath this archway. to where you would have saw Amanda Kruger standing from Neil's point of view. A Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Dream Warriors. So it was this right tower right here that Freddie used to puppeteer Philip to his death. And it was that left window right there that Philip fell to his death, met his demise. Freddie's image was right here above this part of the roof. You can see Freddie above here puppeteering Philip in one of, in my opinion, the most gruesome Elm Street death of the whole series. It's pretty deadly. Nightmare on Elm Street 3, right here. The death of Philip. Here's a screen grab here of Freddie puppeteering Philip here out of the left opening of the tower. It's crazy, this whole roof part here, how he was up in the sky up there. That's pretty awesome. I can't believe they used this tower. <laughs> that scene haunted me for many years as a child. I was about eight years old the first time I saw M Elm Street 3, so I always thought of like, it was like Philip's veins or something that he was using to puppeteer him throughout his dream. As uh, this building stood in, 
as the psych ward in Elm Street 3 for the Dream Warriors. And that was the tower right there. Philip met his demise. I could see him up there. He was wide awake. Knew exactly what he was doing. That's some epic stuff right there. A Nightmare on Elm Street 3. With the Dream Warriors. Another good shot of that tower here at UCLA. Royce Hall. Right tower if you come to look for it. Be cool, be courteous to the students and stuff. A lot of graduation stuff going on here. It is June. And that left window is where Philip is made to appear as if he was committing suicide, but of course. It was Freddy. It was Freddy. That bastard killed him. Right there. So we're here in North Evergreen Cemetery, used in A Nightmare on Elm Street 1, 3, and 4. And over there, they utilize this whole area. We're gonna go over it. And this tree, you actually see this stone in the film, that one, that monument really well, and the tree. This tree you see here, that's this tree right here. Move this over. No leaves on it, but you can tell by the branch distribution. This is a place for summer. See the first funeral take place in a nightmare on Elm Street 3. We're here at North Evergreen Cemetery. And Neil has his arm up against the tree here. Can make this monument out real well in the funeral parlor. And they would have had the funerals over there. This is the tree right here, is where he's standing. There's the stone, and there's the funeral home. I mean, I'm just gonna call it a funeral parlor. I don't really know what the technical term for it is, but it is arm against the tree right there. So she's talking to Neil here, right to the left of the tree, right here. You can see that monument and uh, the funeral home. This one really well in most of the shots. But when Neil has one of his first conversations with the woman in white, who we would later find out, is Freddy's mom. This is pretty much the angle you get. So I'll show the clip where you see Neil talking to Amanda. I should have been able to save them. Uh, a little more distant here because different camera, of course. But you got, see this monument, this one, the home, and this one that stands in front of it, along with this palm tree, just to the right of this one. And he was just standing right here, talking to Amanda Kruger. Dream Warriors! Wearing my appropriate Dawkin under lock and key shirt. And so, yeah, when Neil's talking to Amanda Kruger, you'll see all this just like that. They may have they actually sawed that limb off. Yeah, they could have actually sawed that off. And some of these stones weren't here yet, but you can actually make out this one in the 1987 film. If it's this one over here, or this one right here. Oh, it's this one. This one right here actually in the film so others have been put up since so yeah you can make that out as they're walking this direction and somehow you can't really see this because I guess the angle is more this way but so you'll notice this monument as well as these ones over here
and there's this one right here and you can make out a house which now has some trees growing over it can't really see it as well but that house is just over here and Neil is talking to Amanda Kruger they're actually just talking over here behind them you can see this monument and this tree another tree it does have its leaves it looks nice it's this tree over here and you can make all these houses they look closer in the film you can see this one with a red roof I don't know if you can make it out pointing right at it underneath that tree limb red roof it was red in the film as well still there that was directly behind Amanda Kruger in the movie it's talking Another shot of these monuments that are seen behind Neil and Amanda. Get that one in the film. This one here, just to the left of the tree. So this tree is a movie star, 1987 Elm Street. Same with that tree, the weird branch, this monument, and that red roof. You can see all that in the background as well. The end of the film of uh, Nancy's funeral here. We got Joey and Kincaid here. It looks like the top of this monument behind Joey's actually been taken off, that part. And as far as this tree goes, from what I can tell, especially from this picture here, uh, that limb has been sawed off. The legendary Elm Street 3 limb. It's gone. As you just saw in that clip, this is where all the funerals took place. There's that tree in the background. You can see this right behind him and kind of behind Joey during that funeral and it had another piece on top of it which is now gone but that's that monument nonetheless so this was where all the funerals were in a nightmare on elm street 3. all these were seen in the film the tree all these stones and monuments movie stars tremendous stone right there it's pretty cool pretty cool this is indeed a funeral home they do have funerals in there but was used in the Nightmare on Elm Street. You can see it prominently in a Nightmare on Elm Street 3, but Nancy did set on those steps. Pretty cool. Certainly fascinated by this monument that they kind of added on to since the filming of part three. Ooh, birds got some nests up there. Funeral parlor. This is probably the coolest funeral parlor on planet earth right here because it was in a nightmare on elm street <laughs> weston hills you get quite a few shots just like this every time they return to a scene at the hospital this is pretty much the shot you get making you believe it's the front of the hospital but it's the back of ucla i love it here's another portion at the back of ucla that they used in A Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Neil, when he was coming out of his office, there used to be a door over here. There are now windows. Windows now, but there's a door right there. There's some very similar vans, I think, in the film too, but either way, so he was coming in and out. Creepy ominous nighttime scenes right here at the back of UCLA in A Nightmare on Elm Street 3. <laughs> Neil leaving the hospital. Late night. Oh, it was just over here. In fact, I will show matchups as I always do, but a few matchups. I think you see these doors in the film. Anyway, there was a door over here. It's now a window. Very cool though. Sister! Hey, cool. Great shot here. Weston Hills. The back of UCLA. You see all that. It's so cool to be here. I've been watching this film since I was like seven or eight, so 34 now. It's awesome to be standing in the midst of A Nightmare on Elm Street 3. The Dream Warriors!
love the name of the drug that Neil is researching to give them so they don't dream anymore. And it's a drug by the name of Hypnosil. Prevents dreaming. Nightmares, of course. Don't want to see Freddy? Take your Hypnosil. Just another angle here on UCLA. Great film, great film. So since we're here doing A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, might as well mention that just to the left of Royce Hall, there's some stairs that weren't only used in A Nutty Professor, but also in A Nightmare on Elm Street 5. Bonus secret in the, A Dream Child, there's a dream sequence. And these are the stairs they use. They put these really demonic gargoyles down here to make it look really evil. Not, I mean, uh, true. Yisra. What the hell are we doing here? Hey. Hey! So we see Neil and Nancy's dad, John Saxon, pull up right here. This is the shot you get. As Neil heads in there under advisement from Freddy's mom. Of course, he didn't know yet that that's Freddy's mom. And he heads in those doors to look for the holy water. St. Brendan's Church, 310 South Van Ness. <laughs> this was not only used in A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, it was also used in Guns N' Roses' legendary November Rain video. They shot the interior shots, Axel on the podium, that was all in there. Slash doing the solo. Get some cool angles of this church here. And I believe it was also used in Fight Club with Edward Norton, Brad Pitt. This is the church that she comes to. There are lies and deceit. Good chance that the cast and crew utilize this area for filming. Once they, uh, to, you know, to access the church and whatnot. Sucks it's all locked up. Could maybe try to come back on a Sunday. It would probably be open. Well, that's cool. Interesting just to think. John Saxon. Rest in peace to John Saxon. Uh, filming right here for A Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Look at these lights trees at night and in here I'll show this screen grab off my cell here of uh, the church from the film you can actually see them just about to pull up here look at that these lights are the same that's pretty cool definitely an ominous church see why they picked it for a nightmare on Elm Street 3 in 1987 Wes Craven might have had something to do with it probably chose this church can't get inside it appears that the doors are locked that's a bummer. Cool to cover it anyway. It says St. Brendan's over here. Ooh, I just, I feel the presence of Freddy here. And Guns N' Roses. St. Brendan's. There's the logo there. Creepy church, to say the least. Really unfortunate, it's not open. I'd like to see where he acquired the holy water and the crucifix. We got it anyway. The church. We got the holy water and the crucifix from A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors. Okay. I think this is probably actually the front of the church. Maybe the part, the doors they used in A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 were not the front doors. It says St. Brendan Catholic Church right here. There's the tower. The church from A Nightmare on Elm Street 3. The ingredients 
that would lead to Freddy's demise would lay within these walls. Holy water in the crucifix. Here, you can keep my driver's license. I'll be back. This is kind of the angle the camera gives you when Neil and Nancy's father roll up. Has comforted us, saying that whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my. The end of the film, we return here again. And Nancy. Thompson's funeral would have been right here. Rest in peace, Nancy. Okay, Heather Langenkamp still alive. You see the monuments again. Then, I believe it's right as the funeral is coming to a close. Neil heads over to the tree. He saw the woman in white again. And so when he heads over, she's just to the left of the tree. And there was a makeshift wall set up here. Okay. So she disappears behind the wall, and then Neil follows. Sister! Sister! And when he comes around this makeshift wall right here, he sees the grave of Amanda Kruger. Obviously it doesn't really exist, but the grave of Freddy's mother, Amanda Kruger. You were his mother. You were his mother. North Evergreen Cemetery, the Elm Street Films. That's from part three, that tree. And so is this one, the more notorious tree. Amanda Kruger's grave over here. Neil put his arm up against the tree, viewing the funerals from right here. His arm against the tree, just like that. Looking at the funerals from that angle. Talking to Amanda right here, earlier in the film. They face this direction, and you see all these monuments, especially that one. Go over take a quick look at the uh, home that Nancy sat her behind on the steps of. Here's where Nancy was sitting on the step in the original film. Go over check that out. Oh, it looks like there's a funeral going on, so maybe I won't get too close. And here it is, the Nightmare on Elm Street, part one. Cool looking building. It's a lot more blue in the sky than it was last time I was here. See that Coulter monument there in the first film? Not gonna get in the way of these people, but the doors are open here. Here's where Nancy was sitting. There's that legendary water damage seen in the original Elm Street film. John Saxon over here. See that row of palm trees behind him in that monument there in the first film. Okay. A nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, they put up a fence all around the property. Wow, I'm surprised. And an amazing tie in as well is obviously the Halloween murder houses are just a block or two this way on North Orange Grove but that was also because they shot additional scenes for the TV version of Halloween in 1981 utilizing the interiors here when Lori comes down to answer the phone after having a shower you see a rocking horse in there that was all filmed in here in the Elm Street house in 1981 about four years before they filmed A Nightmare on Elm Street here but that's probably why Wes Craven chose this exact house that's the Halloween Elm Street tie-in Give credit to Sean Clark, Malfunk Sean, who figured that out. The first to unleash that secret. And uh, Lori stands at the door, on the other side of this door, of course, and uh, after she's talking to PJ Souls, and she sings that song again. I wish I had you all alone. Just the two of us.
that met his demise, his first Hollywood role. All the sidewalks and everything, exact same. These cracks can be seen in the original Elm Street film. You're over at the Elm Street house. At Nancy's, you gotta go across the street, check out Glenn's house. Okay, one final look. The Nightmare on Elm Street house. Don't change it. You'll be killing history. Rich Hollywood history. And fitting enough, we end our A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 tour right here on the real life Elm Street outside of 1428 North Genesee. Stone's throw away from Sunset Boulevard in the heart of Hollywood. You'll find the Elm Street House. Thanks again, everybody. Please like, please subscribe. If you're new here, subscribe and let you know when a new episode goes up. Never know what you may be missing here on the Mr. Thrasher Show. Film and locations, roadside attractions. Check out my A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1 filming locations as well. There we go. A Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Done. Into the fire. I'm falling into the fire. Shout out to Dawkin. Everybody loves those tunes. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks again, everybody. Please give it a big thumbs up. Please like, please subscribe. If you're new here, that'll let you know when a new episode goes up. You never know what you may be missing here on the Mr. Thrasher Show. Hit every spot that we could from A Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Covered a little bit of part one. Check this out. This is my Elm Street 3 VHS. Had this since the age of 12. Actually got the whole, it's part of the whole box set. There's the original Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors cover right there. 1987. I like the remaster shot there. Favorite Patricia Arquette film. You think you'll get out alive. You're dreaming. Thanks again, everybody. Please subscribe. Tell your friends. Check out my Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1 locations. We did it. We're the Dream Warriors. Ah! 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 Ah!